All right, article one, we're going to start by talking about Patagonia. So I, I feel like if you're in the States, especially like the Northeast, you're probably familiar with Patagonia. But f- for our yeah. listeners that aren't, uh, Patagonia is a clothing company. I think they're based out of California. They make, you know, um, sweaters, outerwear, T-shirts, hats, everything. I've got a really cool Patagonia bag. Do, do you have it on hand? Do you want to show it off real quick? <laughs> okay, yeah, let's do it. For everyone watching Very sweet. our videos, this is my beautiful... And they got that bag. iconic, like, stitching of the mountain range. So, yeah. what makes Patagonia special is that their founder has always been, you know, in love with nature. So, they're very eco-conscious. They, they have all these initiatives of creating outerwear out of recycled material. They, they have this program that if you do actually have a Patagonia product and it's been torn up, don't throw it away. Send it back to us. We'll do our best to fix it. And if we can't, we'll recycle it. Like they, they really care about making sure that their products have an end of life cycle going with them. And this actually brings us into the article we want to talk about today, which is their partnership with a company called Boreo. And I hope I'm not butchering their name. Boreo is also based out of um, South America. And the story is fascinating. So I'm, I'm going to try to do it justice by walking you through how they came about. Okay, take me on I'm the gonna journey. I'm going to take you on the journey. So it's these, th- this couple friends, and they're passionate about the oceans. And then they see all these fishing nets, and they want to figure out a way to get rid of the fishing nets, make the ocean nice and clean. So they start by talking to the, the fishermen. They're like, hey, why is this happening? They realize that actually fishing nets back in the day were made out of these natural materials, these weaves of like, you know, wool. And although they served their purpose and caught fish, if they got torn up, they were difficult to repair. They didn't last that long. And the benefit of it, because it was natural, was if it was ever left in the ocean, it would just degrade. Well, about 40 years ago, um, this fishing net industry was kind of revolutionized with plastics. And these plastic fishing nets lasted longer. They were stronger. They, um, if, if you ever tore it up, you could repair it pretty easily. But if you discarded it in the ocean, it just kind of would not degrade for hundreds and hundreds of years. Yeah. Here, here's the kicker. You leave plastic in the ocean, that's not And it's a down. pretty bad kicker. So yeah. this has become such a problem that plastic fishing nets are considered as the, the worst way to pollute our oceans in comparison to everything else that we put in there. So like, imagine like oil spills and the crap tons of waste that we just dump in there, the Coke cans that end up around turtles and hex, everything. Fishing nets are the worst. Well, I imagine because they're literally designed to get fish caught exactly. in them. And so if you leave them out in the ocean, I bet there's tons of fish that just get caught in abandoned fish. You're absolutely them. right. They float right um, beneath the ocean surface and they can catch marine life and kill them. And again, they just hang around. So why is this happening? Like, why isn't there a good way to discard them? And these folks, they found out that because there's just no infrastructure, these fishermen have nowhere to take their fishing nets. So that's why they're living out. It's almost out of like, uh, you know, not having any other options. And that's where their genius came in. They investigated the material and they realized that the actual plastic is pretty recyclable. It's, um, I I looked it up online because they didn't mention in the article, but fishing nets can be made out of high density polyethylenes, PET and polyamide, which are highly recyclable materials that are not biodegradable. Yeah, those are some of the few... Uh, types of plastic that are basically recyclable everywhere or almost everywhere. So yeah, I, I know your your uh, expertise on plastics is much better than mine. So if you have any extra info, please chime in as I'm going through this. Uh, no, no, it's it's just encouraging that they have see this opportunity where the fishing nets are made of recyclable plastic as opposed to something that, you know, even if you tried your best, you could just keep it out of the ocean but never turn it into something. I agree. And it, I feel like that was the light bulb moment for them. So here's what they did. They made partnerships with fishing communities in South America. So like, hey, your fishermen, ask them to stop dumping it in the oceans and we'll buy it from you. So we'll pay you guys a premium for these fishing nets that can't be repaired, that you've used them as much as you could use them and they just don't have a purpose anymore. Then they take them and send them to a facility where they pay locals to clean these uh, fishing nets and get them ready for processing. And then they eventually find find their way into a processing facility where they get sorted and shredded and turned into plastic pellets. 
And that, that's the magical ingredient, the plastic pellets that can be turned into whatever you want to be, basically. So I'm guessing they partner with Patagonia. What is Patagonia making from this fishing net plastic? So uh, but before I get to Patagonia, I just want to quickly say that this plastic pellet is so useful that you can make office chairs out of it. You can make Jenga blocks out of it. You can make skateboards out of it. They, they have a lot of cool partners. But Patagonia's cool. partnership with them, I found to be the most interesting because we've talked about fashion before and how it's one of the industries that really damages the planet so if you can you know reduce this great source of pollution and upcycle it to an area of the industry that really pollutes a lot that that's like the best of both worlds so with patagonia they attacked um the brims and caps first so they were made out of virgin plastics to begin with which means you know mm -hmm. you, you got your crude oil you derive the plastic you make it and once um, Bureo started talking to Patagonia. They were like, Let, let's just get rid of it. We can make it 100% out of our plastic pellets, which is actually called Net Plus. And that, that is such a perfect name because you bring in yeah. the net and also the impact that you have, which is Net Plus. Yeah, Net Positive Impact. Exactly. That's I love it. And over, you know, I, I think they first announced this partnership back in 2020. Over the course of this past year, that's evolved, and they're actually incorporating Net Plus into a whole range of products. I think they mentioned 65 styles that go from their caps to like entire parkas. And in doing so, they've reduced 105 tons of fishing net waste. In, in tons or metric tons? Metric tons. Cool. Yeah. And so that's a little bit more. <laughs> and it's. That, that just goes to show you how incredible this is. They took yeah. all this waste that was going to destroy the ocean life and they made incredible products out of it that are still high quality and people love. And it, I could see you rocking one of these things. Like, if you can't tell already, I love Patagonia and I, I'm very fat, passionate about ethical fashion. So, you know, making sure that the people making the products are well treated, make sure that we're not damaging the environment. Dan, I know you and I go back and forth about having like a minimalist wardrobe that is made out of high quality, sustainable stuff. So I'm, I'm very, I was very happy to read about this and the story has got me hyped up. And yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if we see Furbode rocking one of these Net Plus Patagonias soon. I, I'm not going to lie. I was browsing it and I hope the winter gets a little bit colder. So I have like a, a reason to pull the trigger, but what makes me so happy about the story is that from start to finish, it seems like everyone's benefiting. The fishermen, by reducing the waste in the oceans, are preserving the environments that they depend upon. Bureo is able to live up to the goal that they had of cleaning the oceans. And Patagonia is able to deliver these products to their consumers that is as sustainable as they can possibly make it right now. So, if Also, the extra effect of this that I'm excited about is it involves... Uh, economically investing in the local communities exactly. in South America as well, as well, where they didn't have another option for what to do with their fishing nets. Well, you're buying the fishing nets from the fishing communities. You're employing extra local workers to help clean them out. I think, you know, it really is a net plus impact. So we could say, I agree, man. And you know what? It, obviously the thing with recycling is that it does add to the cost a bit, but what I'm seeing, at least in the circle of people that I talk to, is that th there seems to be a movement where people are willing to pay a premium if they know that that money is going towards a good cause and the materials they're getting are ethically sourced and people are treated well. And I'm trying to go on a tangent, but again, I, I was so happy to do this and I hope our listeners got the same amount of value out of this topic as I did. 